Hi, I'm Mary Harrell for Tan Books. Is your piety showing? Maybe you've got a little scapular sticking out right there. Maybe you've got a rosary in your pocket. Maybe you've got some dried palms from last Palm Sunday sticking out of a frame in your living room. If so, you are living a pious Catholic life full of sacramentals. Sacramentals have long been a part of Catholic life. And here today to tell us more about them is the one and only Sean McAfee. Sean has long been a part of the Catholic media scene. He's the founder of EpicPew.com and the author of several books, including Epic Saints, Wild, Wonderful, and Weird Stories of God's Heroes. He writes for numerous Catholic publications, including the National Catholic Register. And today we're talking about his newest release, The Compendium of Sacramentals, Encyclopedia of the Church's Blessings, Signs, and Devotions. Sean, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you for that nice introduction, Mary. Absolutely. Sean, give us just the baseline definition of a sacramental for Catholics. What is it actually considered? Yeah, there are many definitions that the church has tried to use in the last 2,000 years to describe sacramentals. And they, around the third century, they realized, hey, we need to stop saying sacramental or sacrament for these things. Uh, they are not efficacious as the sacraments are in producing sanctifying grace. What the church says is that they, they are objects, devotions, and exorcisms that signify the effects of a spiritual nature through the intercession of the church. And what they want us to know is that these dispose us to go and receive the sacraments, to have a sanctified life, to lead us to holiness, and hopefully into the kingdom of heaven one day. Okay. So Sean, then the next question is, why'd you write a whole book about them? What was so exciting about them for you that allowed you to write so many beautiful pages on the topic? I, I was hoarding all these rosaries and I wanted to know why. Um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I wrote a little book with Catholic Answers on the 20 Answer series defending the use of sacramentals and relics. And it I, by the end of that book, you know, there was a word count there that I had to stick with. And by the, by the end of writing that book, I had at least four of those types of books to write. I had like 90,000 words of content to write. And I knew that I just wanted to share it so bad. Also, one of the opportunity, you know, one of my favorite things about writing is discovery. Um, I really wanted to know more about them too. And then I wanted to, of course, share that. Um, so I pitched this book to Tan as a way more simple idea, you know, just like, you know, a little nine by five book or something, you know, a manual series book on how to use them and what they are. And then they give me the opportunity to write this gorgeous book. And I, I still can't believe that they trusted me with this, but they said they sent it to me as if I had to approve it, like they I had to approve their idea. Well, of course I assented to it. So that's how we got going. I, I don't think they re regret it yet either. I think you're still, I think they're still good with it. <laughs> right. Sean, you include a scripture passage from St. Paul at the start of the book that I love. Stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by letter from Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians. What do sacramentals have to do <clears throat> with standing firm and holding to tradition? Well, that's a great question. There are many ways to answer that. When it, what I had in mind whenever I wrote that is that the, really the historicity that I discovered with these, you know, I was surprised to learn things like medals. You know, I figured that this was something, I knew that the St. Benedict medal went back as late as like the 15th, maybe 16th century, um, or at least the design of it as it stands today. And I knew that, you know, of course, the story of Catherine Labrie and the miraculous medal. So I figured things like medals were produced, you know, sometime in the last couple hundred years. But actually in the catacombs of Domatilla, they found that what Christians would do is they would take the local amulets, the little coins that would have a Caesar's Caesar's name and face on it, or maybe one of their gods, and they would melt them and restrike them with the image of their saint. Saint Christopher is one of the oldest of these, or maybe an image of uh, Christ and His Passion, or maybe the Im image of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Things like that, you know. And and other sacraments go back further than that, like holy water, of course. Um, and so what I had in mind was just, hey, look, let's embrace these, let's preserve these, let's use these, let's practice these, and let's, of course, you know, he's talking about standing fast to the traditions, let's pass them to the next generation. That's really what I had in mind, Mary. I love that. Um, I have no idea. Back to the catacombs? Is that what you said? That's... Yeah. So like Whoa. they date these back and, and most of even the most uh, um, scrutinous studies date them back to like the third or fourth centuries, which means there was probably a practice before that, right? Because wow. what they think is that these Christians, as they kind of started to fill in the catacombs, that mm -hmm. they would dump them in there to get rid of kind of the evidence, so to speak. Yeah. Unreal. 
I think for Catholics, sometimes they can think sacramentals are just Catholic superstition, right? The wear this, you don't go wear this when you die and you don't go to hell. So how do you combat the whole, this is just the get out of jail free card for Catholics? Yeah, well, it's kind of a nerdy answer, but you got to go back to how the church defines things, right? We have to diff we have to get rid of all those misnomers about like the Sabbatine privileges, the one that you had just alluded to with the brown scapular, just putting something over yourself, of course, would be superstitious and silly to think that a, a piece of cloth is what's going to forgive your sins and sanctify you and get you to heaven. What the church really wants us to know is that these should move our hearts like the crucifix mm -hmm. behind me. You know, staring at one of those, I had I had to get more than the feet in there, right? <laughs> staring at one of those and, you know, contemplating the passion during Lent, you know, or doing the Stations of the Cross. That's a sacramental. Doing the Stations of the Cross and those pious devotions should move our hearts and, like we said, dispose us to have, want a life of sanctification. The way that Catholics teach process of sanctification is to go and receive the sacraments and to have that lifestyle. Mm. Um, Sean, you bring up the Stations of the Cross as being a sacramental. I don't think most Catholics know that the Stations of the Cross is a sacramental sign or a sacramental and that you have a section of the book called Sacramental Signs. And of course, there's the there's the smells and bells that are the sacramentals we all know. But you cover blessed chalk, you cover blessed salt, holy oils, why do you think the church gives us such a variety of these tactile sacramentals that really fill our senses when we use them? Yeah, well, I, I'm going to take the, a, a different way to answer that question. The Vatican II document, Sacrosanctum Concilium, that's the Constitution on Sacred Liturgy, very important document for the church today, gives us a lot of definitions of how the church, is, church interprets different items. And what they say about sacramentals is they literally say, this is kind of a quote, they say, nearly anything can be baptized by the church to remind us of our faith. Um, and that's directly talking about sacramentals. So just about everything, you know, the, they used to call sacra, they used to call scapulars a badge. And, oh, you know, wow. maybe two, two, three hundred years ago, they said, hey, in place of a sacrament, if you're in a difficult place to live or your, your, your scapular is being torn constantly, you can wear a medal in wow. place of that. So kind of a backwards way of answering your question. But the church wants us to be able to use the world, the, the items around us that can increase our faith. Now it's kind of got to make sense and it can't just be anything. The church does have to uh, uh, approve of these formally um, in order for them, for them to rise to the dignity of a sacramental. But yes, there are many kinds. Of course, there, you said smells and bells. I love that. I'm going to have to use that from now on. All my future interviews, I'm going to say that. Um, but what we have is also the non-visible ways of, uh, of of worshiping Christ and imitating other saints. And that's through those devotionals and those items of popular piety which the physical and the non-physical fall into, like devotion to the Sacred Heart, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, those are also sacramentals. Do relics fall into the category of sacramentals, or is that a different category entirely? There is a two-part answer to this. The, answer, the direct answer is no, like a regular bone of a saint or, or a piece of their hair or something is not a sacramental. Even, you know, a second class relic of their clothes or their breviary or something, that is not uh, considered a sacramental. It's not instituted by the church. It's a relic because of that saint's holiness. Um, and of course, we have the part that we have the um, importance of remembering that sacramentals involve the the intercession of the church. Well, the church isn't interceding to make that saint a saint. Mm. They're just declaring it a valid, uh, valid person in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the other part to that answer is that, of course, you can touch a sacramental to a relic and create a oh. third class relic, <laughs> right? So you touch your crucifix. I have uh, one in my closet here. Um, my bookshelf, I have a, a third class relic of St. Dominic. It was touched to um, a piece of his bone whenever I was in Italy. I was a very blessed to do that when my priest had like 40 relics and he was like which one do you want to touch it to and, uh he did that for me and it was unsealed um and so yeah wow. so so it's a both and uh, it's classic both and you can create a type of relic third class relic out of a uh out of a sacramental wow it's like 4d chess i can't keep up that's that's incredible <laughs> Um, Sean, exorcisms come up frequently in this beautiful book. I think that may surprise people. What does a rosary or a crucifix have to do with an exorcism? Again, it's all about the intercession of the church, uh, particularly with with uh, with. 
particularly with exorcisms you know we're not thinking always about the movies you know the exorcist wonderful movie like it's actually pretty moving now that i'm a catholic and i can watch that but we're not talking about horror films and things like that we're talking about the church's intercession in removing the presence of evil within an object a person or a place or preventing that from happening so we actually see these more often than than we realize anybody with children who has had them baptized with it by a catholic priest or deacon has had and seen an exorcism and they have assented to that uh, an extraordinary form baptism we point out in the book has three exorcisms and, and and then some sacramentals provide exorcisms as well like holy water may provide exorcism um, and then uh, the blessing the traditional blessing of a of a medal of saint benedict does come with an exorcism for that which is really appropriate because i'd say saint benedict is one of the chief exorcists of catholic history we had our sixth baby had an extraordinary form baptism and the little with the bless salt the exorc yeah. exercising of the newborn's tongue man yep yeah, we had one as well for our fifth child um, in Nursia by the uh, by the monks of, of St. Benedict over there. And Stop. whoa, what an experience. Yeah, we had to smuggle our kid all the way down there during COVID. <laughs> it was great. Fantastic. Okay, so while we're on the subject of, of children, <clears throat> you and your wife, Jessica, raising, is it six now, I believe? Six, lovely little... Six, six. Can't believe wild, it. Wild I know, that's things. not as much as some, but if you knew yeah. me, you'd be like, how? <laughs> So what sacramentals do you think are best for kids, uh, both to handle or to wear, and the best to help them understand what you're talking about here and the church's definitions of what they are? Just about all of them. Um, we try to incorporate everything from the smells and bells. We, we do on our Sunday rosary, we do light and uh, uh, an incense, and then we pour the little granules onto the little puck of chocolate. Uh, puck of chocolate, as they call it, <laughs> um, but it's it's charcoal. Um, we we do that, um, even though you know we try. That's a kind of a quote unquote fire hazard, but um, it helps the kids really say, "Hey, look, something's different going on. Something mm -hmm. different is going on," which I think is very important. Of course, we you know along with that, we do pray the rosary. We use holy water at Compline. Um, you know, we have the fonts around the house. Um, just about all of them. And I taught CCD for a year um, to the military community in Northern Italy, and. Well, I, I think I taught second grade and I made sure that year that I went through all of the chief sacramentals um, that the kids could see around their house and appreciate and know that, hey, look, this isn't just another toy that your mom gave you to stay silent in church. This is something real. It's something that means something. And it's something that we need to treat with dignity. Um, and, I, and I'm a firm believer of that. And I'll try to wrap it up with this one statement is that I think that kids are just like adults that way, where we get enamored with the physical world around us. And we want to see the items that represent our faith. And what better way to do that for children than through the direct use of sacramentals? Yeah, absolutely. The, um, the good old teething rosary. <clears throat> yeah. It's really classic in the Catholic circles, but yep. Also nice to pray with. Uh, Sean, to wrap up here, the book, as you said, is simply gorgeous. This is a gorgeous book. It's the third compendium that Tan has released. Two more on the Blessed Virgin Mary and on miracles. Just great books. Uh, what do you hope people glean from reading more, learning more about sacramentals across the Catholic Church? Well, more than appreciation, I just want people to to use these sacramentals, not just the physical objects, of course, but half the book is the devotions. So we have these sacramentals. We talked about stations of the cross. You know, let's point out an inter interesting fact here is that the stations of the cross sacramental isn't just the devotion. It's actually the physical crosses, the 14 physical crosses that are posted in a church. Wow. Um, and I hope that they don't just come away with appreciation for it, but they say, you know what, I'm going to try one of these or where I'm going to I'm going to expand my devotions and, and try something else, too. I'm going to pray a different novena or something like that. Sorry, one more on the fly. Is there anything coming up for Advent and for the season of Christmas that is especially relevant in sacramentals to liturgical life right now? Yeah, you know, I kind of regret not putting it in this book, but Advent wreaths are a sacramental. Oh. Yeah, I, you know, there's a limited count of things that I could have done. <laughs> and uh, with those, and there, there is also a Christmas novena um, that starts actually at the end of November. Google it. Um, it starts at the end of November and goes for nine weeks and uh, ends Christmas Day. Wow, that's not the St. Andrew Novena. I think it is. Or is it the St. It begins on St. Yeah. Andrew's feast day, right? November 30th or something. Yep. Wow. The Novena itself is a sacramental. 
Yes, all novenas are sacramentals. They are pious devotions instituted by the church with their intercession. What? <laughs> <laughs> Great. It's fantastic. Again, the book is Compendium of Sacramentals, Encyclopedia of the Church's Blessings, Signs, and Devotions. You can find it right here on tanbooks.com and also at your local Catholic bookseller. Sean, congrats on this amazing project. I'm so glad it was turned into something bigger than what you thought. Congrats and have a wonderful Advent and Christmas season with your family. Thanks, Mary.